Hello everyone, sorry for not being active lately. Actually, I broke my right hand's thumb last week, and since it's my dominant hand, things have been rough these past few days. But it's slightly better now, so yeah, let's get on with today's video. Now, version 5.1 is slowly coming to an end, and the 5.2 update will go live on November 20th. So in this video, we'll take a look at everything we'll be getting in the next patch, including banners, quests, events, and more. But before that, the banners of Nahida and Hu Tao are currently live on the servers. If you want to pull for them but have run out of Primo gems and want to save some money, just visit lootbar.gg. Lootbar is a fantastic way to top up for your favorite games like Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail, allowing you to save up to 20% on all of your top ups. How it works? It offers the cheapest prices by leveraging favorable exchange rates and has direct partnerships with authorized top-up partners of Hoyoverse. Over 100,000 people have used it so far, with more than 9,000 positive reviews, so it's 100% safe and secure. Don't forget to check the link in the description or pinned comment for an extra 5% discount. Now, starting with the banners. According to information shared by Full Stop Chan, a reliable source in the community, Chaska, Zhongli, Linny, and Nuvillette will get their banners in version 5.2. To be more precise, Chaska and Linny are expected to appear in phase 1, whereas Zhongli and Nuvillette are expected to appear in phase 2. If this turns out to be true, then the banners are really good, especially the phase 2 banners. They might even break some records since Zhongli and Nuvillette are there. Ororon will also be released in the next update, and he's expected to appear alongside Chaska in Phase 1. Chaska is a 5-star Anemobo user, whereas Ororon is a 4-star Electrobo user. Both of these characters are expected to be sub-DPS, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to their release. Chaska's and Zhongli's reruns were kind of expected, but I'm really surprised to see Linny there. Liney was released in version 4.0 and got his first rerun 5 patches later in version 4.6, but now he's getting his second rerun after just four patches, even when characters like Rios Lee, Jin Yun, and Arlequino haven't gotten their first rerun yet, not to mention some older characters. For those waiting for Venti, Shen Hei, or someone else, you'll have to wait a bit longer. Moving on, Hoyoverse will add some new areas and two new Saurians in version 5.2 as well. All the areas are expected to be located on the northwest side of the current Natlan, these areas will also include two new tribes, Master of the Nightwind and Flowerfeather Clan. As you may already know, the former is Sitlali's clan, and the latter is Chaska's. So it's safe to say this will also increase the level cap on Natlin's offering system, Tona's Flame, and we'll be able to claim more rewards. Version 5.2 is also expected to release a new Natlin Archon Quest Act. However, unlike versions 5.0 and 5.1 comma, the upcoming update will include only one act. We'll also get to do Chaska's story quest since she's a new character, and that's pretty much it for the story. Now, let's take a look at the rewards. As soon as version 5.2 is available, all players will receive 600 Primagems from Hoyoverse for server maintenance, and you can also get a total of 2,520 Primogems from the daily commissions. As I mentioned, we'll get some new areas in the next patch, which means we'll also get a bunch of new world quests, and we can earn around 760 Primogems for completing all the quests. For the exploration part, we can get around 1,300 Primogems from exploration, which includes unlocking chests, the Statue of the Seven, etc., and 175 Primo Gems for unlocking all the waypoints. And yeah, we can also get 300 Primo Gems from achievements, that is, if you're able to get all of them. Moving on, the main event of the version 5.2 update will take place in Natlin, and just like any other flagship event, we'll get 1,000 Primo Gems, a free 4-star weapon, and some other materials. There will also be three mini-events, so we can get a total of 2,540 Primo Gems from all the events. Moving on, the 5.2 update will go live on November 20th, which means the Spiral Abyss will reset only once during the update, so we can get only 800 Primo Gems from the Abyss. As for the Imaginarium Theater, we'll be able to get 1,600 Primo Gems, but this depends on the server you play on. If version 5.3 releases on January 1st, 2025, the Imaginarium Theater will also reset on the same day. So yeah, this will affect the calculations based on your server. Just like the Imaginarium Theater, the Paimon Shop will also reset twice depending on your server. 
first on December 1st and the next on January 1st, 2025. So, if you're on the Asian server, you'll be able to get 10 intertwined fates and 10 acquaint fates from the Paimon shop. Next up, the Offering Rewards, version 5.2, will unlock some new levels of Natlin's offering system, and you can get 800 primogems and 10 acquaint fates from that. You'll also be able to get around 200 to 400 primogems from character trials, Hoya Lab check-ins, and web events. And lastly, three new redeem codes worth 300 primogems will be released during the 5.3 special program, so there's that. Now, if we add up these numbers, we can get up to 13,435 primogems, or 84 wishes, in version 5.1 for Chaska and the reruns. Apart from these, we'll also get a new world boss and some quality of life changes. After the 5.2 update, the Treasure Compass will show the locations of Seelies and Time Trial challenges as well, which is really cool. That's everything we'll get in the next patch, and I hope I didn't miss anything. So that's it for today. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon for more.